I'm here at the Old St. Thomas Church and Cemetery, and this is the most popular grave in this cemetery, and it's called the Witch's Grave, full of very many interesting stories which stemmed in 1970s. It's surrounded by four black posts, and one of the stories is that if you cross those posts and touch the gravestone, that you will be cursed, and that it's black because people set it on fire every Halloween, and that the local people have set it on fire out of spite because she was a mean lady. Also, the other story is that there's a black cat in here that has been roaming the grounds since she died to protect the grave. But reality is that her name was Maria Baldwin before she was married, and she died in 1863 from complications from childbirth, and then her child died nine months later, so the baby is buried with her in the grave. And the only reason it's black is from the acid rain and the railway soot, because it's made of white sandstone that was brought in from Toronto, very expensive stuff. There used to be chains on these poles and that signified wealth. Uh, they are no longer there, as you can see. I would like to thank one of my subscribers for pointing this out to me because I didn't even know this existed. So here's a little close up. If you can make it out there. And there's supposed to be a rose on it, which signifies dying too young, which she did. She was only 22 years old and her baby also too young at nine months old. I don't see the rose. Maybe it's gone, but very popular grave. I thought it was quite fitting for Halloween. And of course, I'm standing inside the poles, so I guess I am cursed. I want to show you some other popular graves in here with urban legend attached to them while we're here. I just have to look for them. <laughs> One sec. This is the most elaborate and most expensive grave in the cemetery. Seven family members died within a short amount of time between 1828 and 1835. And the story here is that there is a lady who put an Irish curse on one of the members here. She said, may all your children die and not one in bed. And the reason she was angry was because one of these family members was a captain of a ship and she was a widow and she had an only son who worked on the ship as a crew member and she did not want him to go to work on the ship one day and he went anyway. Apparently the schooner had run into some waves and had been destroyed and he died. So in her grief, she put the Irish curse on the captain. So he's one of the members here. Nobody really knows why they all died in such a short amount of time. There's stories that one was murdered, another one fell off her horse and died with her unborn child, which they say could be very well true. Another one was caught up in a brawl. And then, of course, the other one was the captain who died in a ship. But they think the most likely reason is that the oldest was a doctor, and he came across a lot of the diseases such as cholera, TB, and the like. And these were highly contagious diseases, probably passed through the family. He died in 1830. There was one brother that still was alive, but he died in a train wreck when he came back to erect the memorial for them. Anyway, I can see why it's so expensive. Very beautiful. This is the oldest grave in the cemetery, and it was for the family of this name right here. I cannot pronounce that. I don't want to butcher it. The website says it was 1819, but it has 1810 there. You can pause that and read that if you like. And it overlooks the ravine here, and apparently there is a beautiful sunset that shines through these trees because that is the west over there. And all it is is a bench. I thought that was writing. Oh, it is writing. Okay. But, uh, uh, there's no way to make that out. This is the gravesite of Samuel Eccles. Now he started a local brewery and it didn't profit very well, so he sold it to his brother, John Labatt. And guess how that's doing today? This is the gravestone of Hugh Richardson, the judge here, and he had sentenced Louis Riel, which is the leader of the Mete Rebellion, to death in one of Canada's most significant cases of capital punishment.
You can see by the size of it that he was very well respected. And of course, we have the old St. Thomas Church from 1822 to 1877, and it closed due to congregation joining a larger Anglican church in town. And if you do want to see a tour of the inside, let me know in the comments and I will get one. It's actually quite beautiful and the oldest building in the city. It's a very popular historic site. So if you're new here, please subscribe. I'll bring you more videos like this and we'll catch you in the next one.